I would like to introduce to you two Buddhist ideas, or at least Buddhists in origin as far as we know. So one is the question, you're going to go through life. There's a lot of things that you can step on that can hurt you. Would it be wiser to buy as much leather as is required to cover the earth or to cover your own feet in leather? Should you cover everything in what will make it more pleasant and easier to travel? Or should you just cover your own feet? The second one is we may draw the bowstring. We may pull it back and we may aim well and release. But what the arrow does after that is beyond our control. The idea, the second one is a, is a Zen idea, uh, directly from Zen. You know, you only have the ability to uh, control how you shoot, not where your arrow goes after it is released. And of course, the first one is Buddhist in general. I'm not really sure which school it comes from, but you should cover your feet in leather rather than trying to cover the whole world because you're going to you're going to encounter things that you step on that are not pleasant that will harm you. So. I might say a lot of things like this, and they may not, a lot of people may not be able to apply them to exactly their own lives. But in this case, I've been thinking about these two, these two ideas, these two Buddhist ideas for a few days now, and I encountered a situation in which it was very relevant. Now, these were, were very relevant. Um, so in my department where I work, hours are being cut. There's just, we're, there's too many people working and hours are being cut. And I happen to be in a shift that I really don't see my manager or people in the, in the morning or anything like that. Uh, so it's very easy to alienate me. So my coworker, one of my coworkers that actually likes me, which is uh, a lot of my coworkers like me, but one of the ones who's very direct and very straight is like, look, I don't want you to be fired. He's like, look, man, uh, unless you do everything perfectly, they, they might fire you <laughs> because that's what they were talking about. We need to get rid of people and you might be one of the ones that, uh, we're going to get rid of. Uh, but it wasn't a coworker in management or anything like that. He was just being honest with me. He's like, they might try to get rid of you because we have too many people and we don't have enough hours um, due to the cutback of hours. And at first I had the response that I've had in the past where I'm like, you know, in my head, I was like, is he telling me the truth? I come up with the answer very quickly in my head. Like, yeah, he's telling the truth because everything adds up. And then also, you know, in my head, I was like, you know, why do they have the right to do that? I didn't do anything wrong. And, you know, I had this discussion with my coworker and we talked about it and I didn't really perceive any deception or anything. He was just having my back because the funny thing is anybody who works with me likes me. Anybody who doesn't work with me, they might like me or hate me, but anybody who works with me actually likes me. I don't know why, but about 10 minutes later, I was thinking about it and I was like, maybe I could work harder. Maybe it's not their fault. Maybe it's that I've been working as hard as I could. And perhaps I could work in other departments as well and get other hours. Perhaps it's not everybody else's fault. Perhaps it's my fault. So in the past, I've had a huge ego. Not recently per se, but in the past, I've had a huge ego. Basically, anytime somebody blame for blame me for anything, I'd be like, oh, it's their fault, or how dare you say this to me? We all kind of go through that. But recently, I've been very much focused on choosing and deciding what I do rather than judging other people's evaluation of what I do. You know, sometimes people will judge you wrong. Sometimes people will throw things, you know, throw blame at you that you don't deserve. But that is not within our ability to control because the only thing that we can do is shoot that arrow. Where that arrow goes after we release it is not within our control. All we can do is release it in the proper way, the best way possible, and then 
that is where the action goes. So the arrow is like action in life. It is, you know, how you act. Uh, you have to define and and basically become skillful in the actions that you do for them to probably produce the best thing they, that it can in the world. But it's not about focusing on what the action will produce as much as it is in acting correctly. That's karma yoga. That's a lot of Buddhism as well. And you're going to encounter situations that, you know, this is a situation that I encountered. And I actually don't even know if I'm going to be fired. I probably won't. I've been there for years. But even if I am, I... It's funny because in the past, when I even encountered the idea that I might be, fa be fired from different jobs, it was very detrimental to me. But now it's like, good luck, bad luck. Who knows? There's this old Zen story about good luck, bad luck. I guess I'll go into it. I'm getting off on a tangent, but, you know, it's kind of what I do. It's kind of... Hopefully, that's kind of what you expect when you watch these videos, because I go off on tangents. Um, so, there's this, uh, there's this uh, Japanese, there's this Japanese family. This is, this is Zen story. Um, and, you know, Zen is the combination of Buddhism and Taoism, which, you know, formed in China first and went to Japan. Um, this is old Japanese, this is a Japanese family. And... Uh, there's an old man on the porch and his son is plowing the fields and you know this is kind of like a I'm taking out some steps here but it, it communicates the same thing there's his son is plowing the fields and he ends up breaking his leg and then his neighbors come up to the old man and say wow what bad luck and then the old man says good luck bad luck who knows and then the next day, an army rolls through uh, and, do, and basically conscripts soldiers. But since his son's leg is broken, they do not conscript him. And uh, his neighbors come up to him and say, oh, what good luck you had. It's like, good luck, bad luck. Who knows? And then the next day, um, basically, he is able to gather a fruitful harvest, even though he had to work a little harder. And for some reason, his fields were pretty abundant. And his neighbors come up to him and say, oh, what good luck you had. And he's like, good luck, bad luck, who knows? Uh, you know, eventually his son's leg gets better. And there's a bunch of horses that, like, run into their property. And uh, his son is trying to tame them. And then he falls off and breaks his other leg. <laughs> and then uh, his neighbors come up to him and say, good luck, bad luck. No, no, no. Got it wrong. They ask, you know, they basically say, what bad luck you had for your son to break his leg again. And he's like, good luck, bad luck, who knows? And then you can imagine a series of events that this family goes through. But the, the idea is that we don't really know if something is bad luck or good luck. Because the universe, the force that it is, a lot of the time, I'd say most of the time, but I'm not really knowledgeable to that. But I would say that most most of the time... We're being guided towards what we need to realize. And we are constantly reminded of what is temporary. Good looks, age, money, food, our current, our current emotional state. We're constantly reminded. So to protect us from all these things, is it wiser to cover the earth in leather emotional leather in this case or is it wiser to prepare our emotions for what is going to happen at any rate thank you very much for watching and hope all of you have a wonderful day